For many of us, accreditation may be something more than a concept, but for those who really want to understand what any accreditation is looking at, welcome to Accreditation 101. This is another video presentation in the HLC Chronicle series intended to inform all on the process. As always, we start by looking at Highland's mission and vision statement to understand the big picture of what we stand for. Memorization is not required, but it would be good to have a general knowledge of what you represent when you work for Highlands. So accreditation for a department, a school, a community college, or a university is done by a group of people that have knowledge of what we should be doing. This is very similar to a teacher, an instructor, or professor at any level evaluating a student for their knowledge and understanding of specific principles and concepts before they are allowed to continue the next level. At Highlands, we have numerous accreditation bodies reviewing much more than just the university in general. In fact, we have three different groups of regulators that look at Highlands. The Federal Department of Education, or DOE, the State of New Mexico's Higher Education Department, or HED, regional accreditation, accreditors like the Higher Learning Commission, or HLC, that review numerous areas before giving their seal of approval. And then we have numerous specialized accreditors for specialized programs like those shown, and education, counseling, forestry, chemistry, and other departments in the schools and of course for the university in total. These accreditation agencies have been around for almost as long as we have had schools and higher education institutions. Here you see a little history of where we are, where they were. And here we are today. As you see, the HLC covers a wide swath of the US and recently announced their intentions to even spread their authority wider. The important thing to note is that the same rules apply for all universities and community colleges, not only in New Mexico, but also in those shown, including North Dakota to West Virginia, regardless of size, financial backing, or other considerations. Also important to note is that any peer reviewer evaluating Highlands may have no prior knowledge or experience with Highlands or even New Mexico. And what is a peer reviewer, you might ask? For any accreditation, this is a person who has experience in the field, department, college, or university setting that they will be reviewing. For the HLC and Highlands purposes, this is usually a person who has worked in some aspect of higher ed. These people will have had training in reviewing other institutions as well, and will be given resources to know what questions to ask and what they need to be looking for in each of the five main criterion areas. If you are interested, you can also find out more and even apply when there are openings in volunteering as an official peer reviewer for HLC by visiting their website. So the HLC was established two years after Highlands and was originally known as the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools, which is now known as the Higher Learning Commission or the HLC, with about 50% private and 50% public institutions under their purview. Like most regulatory agencies, the HLC needs to reinvent themselves every so often to meet the changing needs of the institutions they oversee. Here are some recent changes. And here are the five criterion areas they currently look at, in addition to what is assumed to be standard practices at all universities and colleges, like education, providing access and a methodology for teaching, appropriate courses in the areas taught, etc. So the HLC looks across a wide section of institutions, like those shown, and also includes regional comprehensive institutions like Highlands in their portfolio. There are two pathways that every institution can participate in. Due to our recent but now resolved issues with HLC, we have been placed into the standard pathway. This provides the HLC for slightly more oversight authority and means more paperwork for Highlands as well. Naturally, we would want to be on the open pathway, but we'll need to wait until the end of the current 10-year cycle, or 2028, to apply for that designation. The HLC provides a limited number of people at Highlands with access to the internal website. This is twofold to make sure that they have identified individual points of contact at each institution across their 19 state reach, and to have the system loaded with the correct information they need to review from each institution. 
Basically, they do not want to see dozens of different docs from different people at the same institution. This is why collaboration and communication at Highlands on everything we send the HLC is so important. Here are some terms you need to be aware of. That sometimes people who work in any area on a daily basis will revert to acronyms or abbreviated language unconsciously. More language that you should be aware of. And finally, the HLC does have other authority that can use as well. There may be more added as institutions evolve as well. The HLC does require all institutions, Highlands as well, to pay dues and fees on whatever they do for us or to us. They do provide free services as well in certain areas, but as with any regulatory agency, they are expected to carry their own weight in financial terms and as such, are expected to show their worth by carefully examining each institution for any fault. This slide shows the people you can contact with any question regarding the HLC or accreditation at Highlands, as there are many specialized accreditations at Highlands as well as the HLC. We're also available to assist in those areas, but may defer specific question to the deans or administrators of those areas as well. Thank you for watching this video.